Welcome to the Orion X Download. This is a podcast where we discuss big ideas and big trends in high technology. Hello again, it's Dan Olds, and we are here with another Orion X Download. With me, as always, is my co-host Shaheen Khan. Hey, Shaheen, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm actually physically there with you today. For a we change. are physically I'm in the in same beautiful place. Beautiful Beaverton, Oregon. Beautiful downtown Beaverton, the jewel of the Pacific Northwest, as they call it. So I hear. Yes. Interesting today. Our topic. We're going to be talking about data. Data. Why it's important. How it's important. How to protect it. Uh, definitely, data is now a real asset. Monetization maybe, of data is maybe real. the most important asset. Increasingly, the most important asset. Yes, uh, and that really was the impetus to the paper you wrote. Was yeah. that uh, when there's an outage, it's not just that you're out; you're also not collecting data. That's the thing. It's what happens if you either lose some data, or let's say that uh, your organization lost a day's worth of data. What would happen then? Could you build customers? Probably not. Right. So if you make the analogy with oil, it means you're not excavating for a whole day. You're not yeah. export. Yeah, yeah. It's you're not, not building. You're not yeah. driving. You're not doing you're anything. You're not collecting. Yeah. And plus all the employees that are just sitting around. Now that part is part of the downtime. Yes. When you're when you have a downtime, people can't work. They can't be productive. Uh, so that part is the traditional outage analysis. The part that was new that your paper pointed to was the fact that you're actually not collecting data. Yes. That means your main data asset is not accumulating like it should be, so that's, that's a big loss that's itself big that needs to be measured and have a framework so we know and that's how much what we, it costs. That's what we tried to do is we tried to put some, uh, well, I tried to put some, um, Ways to compute the value. You put a, you put a framework data around it yeah. with um, the type of data, the size of the data, uh, the convertibility of the data. Some right. data is more valuable than other data, in that some data, like for instance, uh, customer invoices, that's convertible to cash right. right away as long as you can get to it. Right. Other data, like historical data, isn't. Right. Uh, also, reproducibility. Can you reproduce that data? How timely uh, is the data? All of that goes That's into true. figuring data, out. Yeah, traditionally, if data is stale and old, the value may drop. Yeah, it probably does drop until something points to it, and then it, mm -hmm. its value shoots up, shoots up again, and then it comes back down. Yeah, but in the process of that article and the paper, the company that kept coming up was Limbit. Yes, and Limbit is the commercial company that delivers <coughs> solutions based on DRBD and other that other added software. Yes, and so we thought that since we're both in Beaverton, why don't we go to Limbit's, at least their, their other headquarters, which is in Beaverton, and talk with them, go straight to the horse's mouth. Well, let's introduce our guest. We're with Brian Hellman at the Limbit's U.S. headquarters. He is the chief operating officer and also head of operations for the United States. For Limbit, Bri that's right. For Limbit. Say hi, Brian. Hey Dan. Hey Shane. Hey. How you doing? Thanks for joining us, Brian. <laughs> or letting Thanks. us join you as it is. No, I'm doing That's pretty true. well. That's actually what's happening. Yes. We are in their palatial conference room right now. Yes, I love we this are. conference room. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Wrap around windows. Plus a wheel of fortune there that uh, not sure what that does. But I know that movie and pizza day is on there. <laughs> well, anytime anybody gets a sale, that gets spun. Ah. Okay. That's and then cool. we go do stuff depending upon what people land on. Right. Much cheaper than actually paying them commissions. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Brian, tell us a little about Linbit. So Linbit um, was originally founded in 2001. We started out with developing DRBD, which is a block level replication software for Linux. Now what does that really mean? So it, it the module itself is in the Linux kernel. It, it, de it replicates data in real time between multiple points. Hmm. So as the software has um, progressed, it's now capable of mirroring data locally and remote simultaneously. Eh, okay. Okay, that's very useful. But because it's part of the Linux kernel, it means that applications can use it without really having to do anything because it's already there. 
You yeah. have to install it, really, right? Yeah, it actually sits. So it, as long as you have a kernel that's newer than 2.6.33, which I believe is anything RHEL 6 and above, um, the kernel is already in, included with it. Um, it sits below the application layer, so the application it's application agnostic. Anything. So if it's already right. a part of it, what do we need you for? So we deal with. We don't. Well, is that a jerky question? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very nice question. No, it's a, it's a question we get asked all the time, and the reality is, is that we develop the software. Um, we sell service and support around the software. Depending upon what you're doing with the software, um, it's not something that's very trivial. So it can be a little bit difficult to set up and get right. High availability is, if done wrong, can actually equate to more downtime than it would be if you didn't do it right. So that's, that's really what we focus on is we're the specialists that deal with implementing and supporting the solution. So, so you need the fundamental tool that replicates yeah. data at the block level, not the file level, at yeah. the block level. Yeah. But if you want to use that capability to make your applications be highly available, or have disaster recovery, or do automatic storage application, that stuff starts being complicated. Getting specialized. Well, you need point. to know what you're doing. Yeah. And you know, if you do know what you're doing, then great, but it is usually difficult. Okay. And in probably HA, something you want some support for. Uh, you probably do, and it's advisable that you do because uh, in those situations, cockpit errors are one of the top reasons why you do get outages. Mm. And as uh, Brian was saying, if you don't know what you're doing, you're better off not doing it at all. So just because it's in there doesn't mean you click a button and it's all good. You have to, you have to really set it up. And I mean, so in a way, you're kind of like how Red Hat is to Linux, you are to Linux high availability? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Good. I nailed that one. <laughs> right on the head. We can yeah. stop now. This. I can stop now. <laughs> It'll leave them wanting more. That's, that's great. Um, so tell us more about Limbit. What else do you guys do? So outside of doing the local replication, we do the long distance replication, as I had mentioned. Um, additionally, long distance. Um, any distance. Any distance, as long so, as you're attached to a network. Yes. Okay. So we actually replicate between our office here in Beaverton, Oregon, all the way over to Vienna, Austria. Ah, and we okay. do so without impacting the application performance whatsoever. Well, that was the next question. What kind of overhead are we looking at? Um, for the, the Linux kernel module itself, I believe, is around 200 kilobytes or so. So it's very much. small. Um, just as a proof of concept, we've set this thing up on Raspberry Pis. We built a cluster. Oh, yeah. we've, we built a cluster of those to replicate between. That's cool. Um, and then we've gone all the way up to the supercomputing. We've worked with some of the biggest names in the industries, uh, like storage vendors, network mm -hmm. vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, Mellanox is one of our partners. Okay. We're doing a lot of work in the RDMA field right now. All right. So is your product under the covers with a lot of these companies, vendors? There are numerous appliances that ship a high availability component, and we're, we're that component. And a couple okay. of cloud providers, I understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when you're dealing with cloud, you deal with scale, yeah. and the cost of a SAN or NAS doesn't really scale very well when you're talking tens of thousands of nodes, yeah. especially when you're trying to deploy these in an automated fashion. So when you deal with software, that's much easier. So sure. we'll be used in these cloud providers, and they'll just roll us out like they do anything else okay. across so tens I of thousands you, of nodes. Whenever I see high availability or resilience or disaster recovery or you know anything that implies you know high levels of uh, availability, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't see another vendor's name in there, my assumption is that it's Linbit underneath. Really, I think so. It's pretty now, pervasive. Uh, Brian would know better, but I don't know to what extent he can he'll share. Tell us, but yeah. <laughs> if it's running Linux, chances are that it's our software. It's an if, it's a, if it's a high yeah. availability First offering. of all, all of them are running Linux. Yeah. It's already in the kernel. True. True. It does what it is you need to do. And if you're running a cloud, you're not going to go get it from a proprietary vendor who's going to charge you millions of dollars mm -hmm. for it. Nope. So suddenly going with Limbit becomes a relatively no-brainer option. And then you, mm -hmm. you know, the article you wrote, you know, and now I look at their website is like almost 1.6 million downloads yeah. for HA software. We're That's not talking about deal. like, you know, personal productivity. We're not talking an about an app on your phone. You're talking about a data center grade yeah. industrial strength software. 1.6 billion. You have to wonder who doesn't have it. That's an awful lot. Yeah. 
You said million, right? Million. Okay, I thought you Did said billion for a second. Billion? Yeah, but I guess not. I don't think we have that many data centers. I don't think so either. So, uh, so Brian, I look at your, da your, your, your website, and it says Limbit HA, Limbit DR for disaster recovery, Limbit SDS for software-defined storage. Would you take us a little bit through how you look at the market and what your, what your product These packaging products looks like? Do. Yeah. So the Linbit HA is high availability. That's what our core competency is. That's what we've been doing since 2001. The disaster recovery aspect of it came around 2008. We'd had a customer, um, I believe it was the Nath National Weather Society in uh, Europe. Mm. They wanted to transfer large chunks of data across their ISDN line, but of oh. course this impeded their application performance yeah. because ISDN is super slow. So we came up with this product, um, Linbit DR, that is able to buffer the writes without impacting performance locally and then transfer them over the wire as bandwidth is available. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So that's how we do the, the long distance stuff. So Lin Linbit SDS, as, we, as we, we're going toward the cloud infrastructure and everything's out there and we're talking scalability, um, DRBD has been evolving as well. Mm -hmm. So it, prior to last year, we were doing one-to-one -one replication or if you got fancy with it, you could do stacked resources and get up to four nodes of replication. Now we can do one to 31 in a spoke-like fashion, wow. so one to many wow. replications of a single resource. So you can actually, in a DRBD pool as we call it now, you can actually have thousands of nodes. Oh, now, okay. But you can only have the data set mirrored up to 31 times, which I, we've never seen it. That's, the not most, huge, that's not a very big limitation. I mean, 30, 31 <laughs> copies of your data is a pretty big deal. Yeah, the most we've seen is four. Okay. So, so four <laughs> copies of the data. That's you know after that everyone's like okay it's on you know it's on RAID, and then it's also spanned across four nodes with redundancy built Different throughout geographic locations. Yeah, the likelihood that that's going to happen where something where all of those systems go offline simultaneously is slim to none. So in fact, I was going to ask you. I see, especially with Suzy, they use the word geoclustering. Mm -hmm. So that's another word for disaster recovery. And I understand that that also is like a joint collaboration between Limbit and SUSE. Yeah, we actually developed uh, about 60% of the components of that offering in-house here at Limbit. Um, so with that solution, you're able to mirror data between multiple data centers and then also do automatic failover. So if a data center falls off, you can transition the entire data center to another data center within minutes. Um, uh -huh. And I say minutes because you need to make sure the other data center is really offline prior to bringing yeah. the new one online. Yeah, you would not want that to be a split second decision. No, no, it's, it's, gener it, it's configurable to as much time as you want, but we generally set it to around three to five minutes. Okay. Um, so to with, prove it's really dead. Yeah. Not just half dead. Yeah, it needs to be all the way dead. Yeah. But yeah. With, uh, with that offering, um, we use a product called Booth, which is what we, we had developed. Uh -huh. And that enables us to that enables us to mirror the data and make uh, intelligent decisions as to whether or not to promote a data center to a primary. All right. And then I saw a press release that had to do with Oracle Dyn mm -hmm. with this is when DNS records are flipped so that traffic is automatically redirected to a different data center even though the address on the packets was the, you know, doesn't have to change. Uh, does that change the time frame of you know, flipping it to a different data center or is that still kind of a few minutes? And it's in fact, you know, how, what's, it, what, what, what's going on between, between Limbit and Oracle Dyn? So we partnered with them to provide this dynamic DNS uh, hence the name Dyn DNS. And th the reason for that being is we are able to fail over between data centers, but you still have this issue of customers trying to access the data. And if the IP address changes, which most likely it's going to if it's in a different part of the country, you need a means of, of accessing that, and that's generally through a DNS name oh, I see. or a URL. And with Dyn DNS, part of the failover process can be to initiate that DNS transfer from pointing to your old data center to your new data center 
And that all happens, again, within that three to five minute time frame. Okay, okay. Oh, I see, got it, got it, got it. Now, you mentioned that DR has been around, the, D the disaster recovery solution has been around since 2008? Correct. So that's already some it's years? Almost 10 years. Yeah, so one would say that the wrinkles are probably ironed out of that one. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. but, but that reminded me, uh, how, how old is the company? How, how, you know, give us a little bit of a history of Linbit. So, Linbit itself was founded in 2001. DRBD development actually started in 1999 okay. um, as part of a college thesis from Philip Reisner. Um, at his school, the mail server continually went down and it was due to failing hardware. So to mitigate this so he could actually get his mail, his email, um, he created this software called DRBD. And really? that, that enabled... That's a pretty cool story. That is a pretty yeah. cool story. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he was solving a real-world problem. He couldn't That's actually... the thing is that when you're solving your own real-world yeah. problem, that's great. That's a great foundation for any company. Yeah, so that's he did that, and then around, I believe, um, 2000 or so, he met Lars Ellenberg, and then they started formulating what would soon become Linbit, the mm -hmm. company, in 2001. Uh, 2008 rolls around, and we had founded the U.S. office, and we've been here since. Mm and just growing like a weed. Consistently. Very nice. That's great. There you go. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, this has been interesting. You know, I love the story. I, you know, I saw your article in the register with 1.6 million downloads, and it's such an unexpected piece of the data center software puzzle. I mean, you'd expect millions of downloads for angry birds. Yeah. <laughs> but exactly. not that kind of download for enterprise not HA. calm, resilient, highly available birds. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for the time, Brian. We really appreciate it. And thank you for having me. And we'll be back uh, soon with another OrionX download.